G'day guys. So in the previous video, I created the system for drawing out these walls. And the idea is that it's going to drop a construction task for each one of these. So I've already got it actually saying build a wall and putting all the positions in. I know that. Um, and the first thing I saw when I turn this on is I keep getting this the input map action click cancel doesn't exist. Now that input, it does exist. Project, project settings, input map. It's right there. It's happening here even yeah, you know, because I guess my UI is set up as a tool, which means it's loading in the editor. And so I guess these actions aren't put in yet. So I could just put in a little, if we're running in the editor, don't run any of this. I don't want to do that. I think I don't need to be a tool right now. I'm just going to get rid of tool and I'll just reload the project, fix that. All right, that's fixed. Let's pull everything back. All right, so I guess the first thing we need to do is go back to the UI. And we're right now we're placing the construction orders and we're just printing it. Now we're going to be doing more stuff with the terrain and setting cells. So I really want to get rid of these. Right now I'm just putting a two for the layer, which is not really working for me. It was a bit dumb for me to do it in the first place. So let's go and fix that. Let's just go grab our terrain. And let's look at our layers. Now I've had a bit more of a think about the layers. So you've got the base one, which is going to be basically the terrain. So it's going to be dirt, grass, mountains, rocks. Then we've got built. So that's the stuff that's been built. Obviously walls, any little constructions. We'll keep that on a second layer on top of the terrain. We might even have another one for actual rocks. So you can dig rocks and we'll have the dirt underneath. So the base might be the dirt or the ground. Then we'll have the rocks, which I won't do quite now. Then we've got the built stuff. Then we've got the construction ghosts. Now that's what I've got my drawing lines going on to right now, but I need to leave them on there. Right now I've got them disappearing and clearing them all. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add one more and I'm just gonna call them UI ghosts. So these are the ones that as you're drawing, they exist, but as soon as you're finished drawing, they disappear. Construction ghosts, you know, you can set a hundred different build orders. They'll sit there until they get built. I think this is a better way to do it. Then I'm gonna to go to my terrain. And instead of just doing numbers, I'm going to actually set this up as an num. So first I'm going to go class name terrain on this, so I can call it anywhere. Then I'll go in num terrain layer and we'll have base equals zero built equals one construction ghosts equals two UI ghosts equals three. Now, actually, I don't need to put in these numbers. It'll automatically be assigned those. But since this is referencing those layers, I do just want to enforce it just to make sure. Later on, if I add another layer, I'll have to update those as well. But I think it's a bit safer than just having them in order. All right, so now let's go back to the UI and pretty much everywhere where I said layer two, let's go terrain, terrain layer and layer who is is now going to be my UO go, my UI ghosts. So the UI ghosts, because this stuff I'm just drawing. So just looking for twos. Uh, yep. Clear layer two, clear layer two, sets up two. Okay, if I've done everything right, nothing should have changed. Fantastic. All right, so the next thing is when I release, it will change from just a ghost to being an order. Um, now, who I could pass it straight to tasks, and tasks would hold on to all the ghosts. But since they're going to end up on the terrain eventually anyway, I might pass them to terrain now. So let's say, well, there's going to be a list. So for position in terrain.get used cells. So what that is, this is this one here, which is right now just grabbing everything that I've drawn something to. So my full list of walls that I've just drawn. And then we'll just go terrain. Whoops. And let's go, um, let's say place construction order and we'll give it the prototype and we'll give it that position as well. Oh, and I can't do that before, after I clear the layer. 
All right, so we go through that list of all these guys, pass them on a place construction order along with the prototype, and then we clear that layer. Fantastic. So let's go and set this up in terrain. That should be everything we do here, I think. So in terrain, prototype, the terrain position. Now, <clears throat> I've had a big problem with this in the past. There's two kinds of positioning. There's the terrain position, which is what these are in. And that is each one of these squares is zero, one, two, three, four, five. But the world position, like when you click and when you move a sprite, that's going by the pixel and there's 16 pixels per square. Terrain position is always gonna be those grid positions. All right, so let's see. We need to hold on to a bunch of construction orders. So let's make a variable uh, constructions. And what I'm thinking for now, I'll have one list which will include the pending constructions and the final constructions. So objects will start, construction objects will start as ghosts and then we'll just transfer but stay in the same list. I can split them later if I have to. And I'm gonna make them a dictionary. And what a dictionary lets me do, instead of just having a list, I can have them let me, um, I can put them in keying pairs. So I'll have a vector to I and then the actual construction. So I can say, hey, give me this position and it will give me that one instantly. Whereas otherwise I'd have to go through the whole list, filter it and then find the right one. So let's go var new construction equals place prototype and we're gonna make a duplicate of it. If I just put that one straight in there, they'd all have the same actual object. When you change one, they'll all change. So that's no good. Uh, let's go constructions, oops, constructions. And we're gonna give it that terrain position. So what I'm doing now for this guy, I'm giving it a key of that position. And we're saying, add that new construction there. Uh, let's see, and then that new construction, let's do some more stuff to it. Let's set its position now. We need to be able to get its position in the same way we get sprites position. This one isn't actually going to be a sprite. This one's not going to exist on the map. It's only going to exist in this list. So when we need to talk to it, we just, you know, when you hit a wall here, the tile map knows there's a picture of a wall there, but then it's going to take that position, refer back to here, the constructions to know what to do with it. So it's not actually being drawn. It's not in the hierarchy. So it doesn't have a position because it's not a, node 2 ds So what we need to do is go back to our wall and what we'll actually do is give it a position. And that's gonna be its vector two world position. So it will remember that. And that's just because there's a lot of stuff I've already made which needs to use that. Like the path, not the path finding, the finding items, a lot of the task stuff, we use this same one. So this will allow it to act as if it extends from node 2D. Uh, back to terrain. So it's position equals. Now we've got this problem once again where we've got to convert the terrain position to the world position. And I've done this a few times already, but I think it's time to make a proper good one. So let's make one. It's just world to terrain position. So that'll take a world position, which is a vector two, and it's going to return a vector two i. And it's going to take x, it's going to the world position dot x. Now, I got this wrong the first time and I haven't fixed it yet. If we go and have a look, I think it's in our pathfinding. Yeah, to get that 16 pixels, I was using the rendering quadrant size because I just looked at the terrain. I had a quick scroll through it, saw, where is it? I can't find it now. It's around here somewhere. But in any case, what we actually want is this tile set tile size that's the actual size of the pixel if you guys want to have a high resolution pixels or less or lower resolution this is what we want to do so what we're going to actually do is i should fix it here i'll do it later and uh, do, 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 what am i looking for why is my ui broken i guess this terrain is broken yes so we're going to divide it by the tile set tile size dot x and that's it. That'll give us always the correct one. 
and then we just return vector 2i x, y. And now from anywhere else in the game, I can get this by just going terrain.world to terrain pen pos. So let's do the exact same thing again in reverse. Terrain to world pos. So we'll take that terrain position, which is a vector 2i. And in this case, we're grabbing those two and we're just multiplying this one by 16. Simple as that. There, this is something I should have done bloody ages ago, but now it's locked in. Oops, make sure we're actually going X and Y there. Just X twice. Good. So now when I pass through that position, I can take this terrain position and I can go terrain to world position and that's it. And it is important to link things back properly to whatever changes. If everything's got 16 manually written in there, if I ever decide to change that, then I've got to go change it a hundred times as well. It's always good to make things, if it's based on this, make it reference that. I'm telling myself more than you guys. All right, now let's see. The walls are going to have to be a lot like my plant because we're going to be doing a building thing on it. So for the task management system to make it work. We have this harvest progress and harvest difficulty. This, is, this tracks how much we've harvested a object. So we're gonna have this similar thing for the walls. So harvest difficulty, actually I wanna make that changeable. So let's say it's got a difficulty of one and it tracks its harvest progress. Now actually it's not its harvest for this, it's build. So this will start at zero and when it gets to one, the building's finished. So what else we've got? So we've got this function which gets called. So let's grab that as well. So every time we try and build it, we'll increase the build progress. This part here spawns items, the spawns wood dropped when the, or berries when the object's harvested, so we don't need that. Uh, build progress, harvest difficulties, build difficulty, build progress. All right, now it does need a reference to the item manager, which is tricky because this won't actually exist in the hierarchy, so it can't talk to it. So we will give it the item manager. Item manager, let's want to talk to the terrain manager. What we'll have to do is just send that manually. So when we create him, We'll go new construction dot terrain equals self. So then when he's done, he can send a message back to the terrain to shift it from the, being a building ghost to being a real one. All right, we want to actually add it. I haven't done it yet. Add it to, right now it's on the UI ghost layer and it's about to be cleared. So we need to add it to this layer. So that's the same thing. It's just set cell and it's going on terrain layer, the construction ghosts. It's going on the terrain position. It's tile set number two. Um, that's this one here. I need a better way to reference that as well. So uh, I'm not going to fix it yet. And then we need to grab the actual tile map, which it, it, the tile map position, which is grabbed here. The tile map index that tells it which actual picture out of here it is. So each object will know that for itself. So, so it's going to be new construction dot tile map index. One final thing I've got to do is have it send it to the task manager to set up the task. But before we do that, let's make sure it actually stays. So what should happen now is the ghost just stays when, when we've drawn it. Oh no, what have I done? Item it doesn't exist. Um, let's see, on construction complete is what that's going to be. And not item manager, but terrain manager. And let's just put that here for now. All right, now it should work. Container structure, wall. No oh dear. In the set index terrain on base node wall. Terrain doesn't have terrain. Wall. Terrain manager. Oh, yes. 
right, yep, let's give it terrain manager, more obvious. Although I did have to just call it terrain, should that be terrain manager? Let's just keep it how it is now. So it's gonna be called terrain. I draw a wall and there you can see it's been moved to the construction ghost layer which I haven't told to be invisible yet hey when is it getting cleared all right so at some point that layer is getting cleared which it shouldn't be let me go back to UI Yes, I'm still clearing layer two here. All right, now the other thing I need to do is make it invisible. And that is this set layer modulate. So what I'll do is let's just do that when we start the terrain. When we start the terrain, we'll do that. So the construction ghosts, and in fact, should I do the UI ghosts now? No, let's leave it. Maybe the UI might want to do solid things sometimes. So the construction ghosts will be set invisible Let's quickly check that and make sure we've got all the visible stuff done. There we go. Ah, now one problem is I can build them over and over and over and over and over. And it's only drawing one there, but they're adding to the list a bunch of times. One good thing about using this dictionary is when I place it before I do anything, I can just go if construction, whoops, if construct, Instructions dot has key. So basically, if we've already got one at that position. Then what we'll do is uh, let's print an error. Instruction order already exists at this position, and let's do the position. Then we'll just do a quick return and basically skip the rest. So it'll just never get added to the construction list. Constructions. Not has key, just has. All right, now if I drew an extra one here, you can see already exists. If I do it over the top, a bunch of them already exist. If I do this one, I should get one element already existing. Yep. And if we change to a door, we can see it more clearly that we're not drawing over the top. Okay, so now these exist on here. What we need to do is make an order associated with these so the little guy will come and fix them up for us. So let's go task manager. This does have the task manager, doesn't it? It does not. Now it's add task. Task type, target item. Now our task types are part of task. So let's go to task. Let's see, we've got base task, which is nothing. Find item, walk to, pick up, eat meal. We haven't got to build one yet. Let's add that. And then we go add task, task.task type dot build. And then we'll pass that new construction, which will give it the position and everything else that it needs. All right, so I think that's done here. Let's go to the task manager. Okay, now, right now, the only task type we're generating is the harvest type. So let's go LF, we've got the build task, and we just need to make an init build task for the target item. Good, so let's go to our tasks. And so what that init does, because the task is a bit of a bunch of subtasks, it actually generates those subtasks for us. Init build task, we've got a target, and it's gonna be really similar to our harvest. So we make a new task, 
and that is going to be the same thing actually a walk to task it's got the target yep that'll be the same and the second subtask will be the build so, so harvest and build are really similar tasks as in once you're there you just keep whacking at it and for the plant you're whacking away at the harvest amount for the wall you're whacking away at the build progress aside from that they work pretty much exactly the same so that should generate the task for me let's go to the actual guy who handles the tasks which is our pawn and the pawn ai so let's see he's got his walk to he's got his harvest so basically we'll make a copy of harvest and so this is what runs as soon as the task starts he just puts him into doing a subtask mode so he doesn't grab the next one and the important thing is during the task he'll pretty much do this so once again we're pretty much just changing everything to build and i'll try build is what we called it i think and it's going to be oh, let's give this guy a build skill so he's got a harvest skill build skill and we'll print the build progress so he'll walk to it same as usual we've already built the walking subtask he'll build it i probably forgot something oh i need to actually put a guy into my game so let's just grab a pawn and drop him in all right let's run that and hunger bar oh, hunger bar is something i added for testing before i actually had a little ui bar attached to him we're not using that we don't need it so we can delete that all right so he eats the food as normal he's building it okay now you can see what he's doing here this starting subtask find item that is actually him looking for food because i've got him needing food real quick um Let's just make, because I've got the food need developing really quick for testing. Let's make it really high and let's start him start, have him start with full food. So we shouldn't have to worry about food unless we keep the game going for a while now. I might put in later just a little switch box to turn that off for when I'm playing around. All right, build a wall. He does the task. He finishes building, he does the next one. Cool. That's it, he built them all. Um, so they all have basically a full build progress bar now, I assume, because they've it's got to be greater than or equal to one. And so now we just have to make the terrain, switch them onto the main construction layer and be solid, easy. So let's see, on construction. So the first thing I want to do is erase this cell with the ghost. So we'll delete that. So that's on the construction ghost slayer. Oh, let me just copy that. I don't know why I can't type constructions. And we're gonna go, let's see, from the construction here, we can get its position, but then we need to switch that to the terrain position, to the world to terrain pos. And that will erase that cell. It'll make it disappear after it builds it. Then. We need to set a new cell on the built layer. So it's going to be on that same position. And the time map index, we'll just grab it from this guy now. All right, let's try that. It builds it, builds it, beautiful. Now I've got a problem that he's standing right on top of the wall. And in fact, if I put another one here, you see he happily walks straight over the walls because they're not doing anything to stop him. Um, I'm not going to make them impassable, but I do want to make them part of the pathfinding. So what I need to do is, how are we going to do that? So I guess let's just put something here to pass it through. So pathfinding, access to pathfinding, it does not. Okay, and we'll be doing something like add construction to pathfinding and 
and um, I guess it's going to have to know the layer and the position. It doesn't actually need to know anything else because the pathfinding actually looks directly at this. So we can already see the picture. Oh, and I need to go to the terrain. I need to know, see what I've got is each one of these guys, each one of these guys has custom data. So this is custom data number zero. See this, no, it's 1.2. This is the walking difficulty. So what I'll do is for these guys, I'm not gonna make it impassable. I'm gonna make it a thousand. And my plan is, I actually don't want the guys to just imagine this not being on the map at all. I want it to be really hard to get past. And then what I'll do later is when he finds that the only way through is to walk over one of these walls, I'll have the AI work out how to like bash the way through. So it'll still treat it as not completely impassable. So that'll all be a thousand, just super high for now, just to keep it simple. Um, actually no doors should make no difference, I think. Maybe a small difference. Hmm. This would be more relevant when I start doing the opening doors things. Let's make it two for now. So worse than he'll go through an open passageway rather than a door, I think is good. All right, so now what we do, we need that to be passed on to the pathfinding. So I've got this guy. Let's grab that whole thing. Go to pathfinding. Hit pathfinding. Okay. So we're receiving the layer, which is the terrain dot. No, the layer is an int. And we're receiving the terrain position. So let's just enforce that that's the terrain position and it's a vector 2i. Okay, now to add something to the A star grid, it's this one here. Set point weight scale in what position and what difficulty. Right now, I've got this method here, which is looking at the terrain to find that difficulty score, but it's only looking at layer zero. Because when I created that, we only had that one layer. So let's grab this one. And so the A star grid set point scale, and it's gonna be in this position and so get terrain difficulty, we need to add a layer to this. So layer, it's an int. And so it's also going to take layer. Um, so that means I need to fix this one. So it's got a layer. So for the start, let's just have it grab terrain layer. Oops, terrain dot terrain layer base is what that's going to look at by default. And then when other stuff is added, it'll write over the top of it. So we're not gonna have this one here anymore because that's being passed through. Oh, this needs to have that in there as well. Ah. So there, this should pass on the difficulty from that layer, which is the wall that's just been put down. So now he shouldn't walk over it. He'll still stand on it when he's creating it. We'll fix that next. So if I create some walls here. Mm. Ah, okay. So other places I've used this get terrain difficulty. Ah, so this is where as my guy's walking, his walk speed depends on that get terrain difficulty. So let's just, let's look at the base for now. We'll have to actually do something new for this. It'll have to like grab maybe the, the layer that has the highest difficulty terrain layer dot base. Let's keep it simple for now. So if he does walk over the walls, he'll walk at normal speed. As it is now anyway, that's not the plan. So you see he actually still stands exactly on top. But if I tell him to put something here, he will walk around. Right, now the final thing is I don't want him standing on top of things when he builds them. So that, that task we made where he walks right up to it was great for walking over a berry and picking it up, but not for building something. So that's going to be part of the walk 
two tasks. So we've got this task walk two. Now we could have some sort of a tag on it, which tells it to walk one short. I think what I'll do for now, let's make another one which is walk next to. And so in fact, harvesting plants, if it's a tree might use that as well. I might change this later. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but let's, let's do it for now. So walk next to. So when the UI follows the instructions, we've got a new task here. So we're gonna have this one exactly the same, but walk next to, and you see why I say it could just be a tag maybe that gets passed through. Let's keep it this way for now. So walk next to, and so it will finish in the exact same way. Walk next to, so the only thing that will change is when he's setting the move target. So the character controller, he sets the move target. So go to my character controller, set the move target. It gets passed through to the pathfinding. And I really want the pathfinding to do this work. So what I might do is just add another parameter to this. So let's say, if it's the walk next to, we'll say true. So there's gonna be a final Boolean on here. And what we'll do for set move target, that will get passed through next to, and we'll make it just default to false. So then I don't have to change all the old elements of it. It'll just be assumed false. And then for request path next to so Boolean. And then what we'll do if it's next to, whoops. So by default, what's this? I think this is just a test one I put in. Oh, no, I shouldn't have to fix that. So I forgot to set that to false. Yeah, so now I can still just go start and end and it'll be assumed false, we'll walk directly up to it. Then what we do now is we go, if we're in next to mode, and if length of path is greater than one, we'll go path.remove at land path minus one. So we'll just basically remove the final element from the path. So the actual last one when we walk on top, that'll be gone. Let's give that a go. I think that's it. There we go. And I might change it so we can't build diagonally, but I think this is good for now. So they're just doing them in order right now, but later on we'll have something where it works out which one's closer. And actually I just realized I've not actually put in any of the um, construction material. So I'll actually come back and add to this, probably not today because I've already been here for quite a while. We'll make it so right, you need wood to make this. You'll look around, find the wood, which is already part of another task that already exists. Find the wood, bring it over here. And what I'll do now, if I build out here, he will still, oh, he's walking through the door. That's brilliant. Great. All right, that works really well. I'm quite happy with that actually. And let's just make sure we can't build anything over the top. So if I just build here, nothing's there. If I go and build like that, if just put one here, one here. All right, yeah, that works really well. All right, so things we haven't got yet, like I said, build materials that's not included yet. I'll probably do that next, I think. And then we've also got to have the prettiness factor so that a single wall should be sort of like a rounded edges wall. These ones will still look the same, but then the, this one should be replaced with a T shape and corner pieces. I'm not sure if I really want to do that yet. I'm not too fast on making it beautiful yet because I have no idea if I'm going to stick with this tile set. Well, I'm probably not going to stick with this tile set. This is a really crap tile set. Um, yeah, in fact, I might just leave the art style off completely for now and let's just worry about making gameplay. All right, um, but that's enough of me yammering on. Um, if you're still here, thanks for watching. As always, if you, if you can, give me a couple of bucks down on the Patreon or in the, in the YouTube thingo, I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, thanks for hanging around and I'll see you next time.